Once upon a time, there was a famous dynasty called the Ichavaku dynasty, ruled by very powerful kings. A famous king called Manu, who was known as the foremost ruler of mankind, built the beautiful city of Kosala on the banks of the river Sarayu. Kosala was a beautiful city with well-laid great royal highways, abundant streams and rivers and beautiful flowers. Manu was succeeded by another powerful king called Dasaratha, who became the ruler of the kingdom. Dasaratha had three wives. He was highly courteous and intelligent. He had the best ministers. But he had one sorrow. He had no children. One day. Your Majesty, you seem to be worried. Nothing interests you. Minister, in spite of all my wealth, fame and power, I don't have any children. Who will take care of this kingdom after me? My Lord, if we perform Ashwamedha Yatna, the horse sacrifice, you will definitely be blessed with children. What has to be done for them? My Lord, I will take care of all the arrangements, but it is important to call all the saints and kings for this. We also should call Rishyasringa, the great saint. Who is he? My Lord, Rishyasringa was a forest dweller who was absorbed in the study of the Vedic scriptures. He was not aware of women or worldly matters or even of worldly pleasures. He never left his hermitage and he had not seen any people or even any other objects of pleasure, either from the city or from the countryside, right from the time of his birth. Interesting. One day, while he was entering a palace for a ritual, King Ramapada gave his daughter Princess Shanta to Rishyasringa in marriage. From then on, the great Rishyasringa lived in the Anga kingdom along with his wife Shanta. The sage's presence in any kingdom is auspicious for that land. He brings success, prosperity and fame to the kingdom. Alright, please go ahead and make arrangements for the Ashwamedha Yagna. The king called all the ministers and sages and performed the horse sacrifice. The yagna was performed in a grand manner. A few days passed, all his three wives became pregnant. The first one was Queen Kausalya, the second one was Sumatra and Kaikeyi was the third queen. The king was overjoyed. Soon, Queen Kausalya gave birth to a son. He was blessed with all the divine attributes. He had lotus red eyes, lengthy arms, roseate lips and a majestic voice. He was the epitome of Vishnu. He was named Rama. Queen Sumatra then gave birth to two sons, Lakshmana and Shatrugna, and Queen Kaikeyi gave birth to Bharata. With the birth of the princes, there was complete happiness in Ayodhya. The entire city wore a festive look. There was dancing and music in the streets. Crackers and colors adorned the skies. Flowers and fragrance filled the air. The children soon grew up. Rama became a champion of riding elephants and horses.
He was a master charioteer. Grew skilled in the art of archery. And always obeyed his father. Right from childhood, Lakshmana was always amiable towards his charming elder brother, Rama. Lakshmana dedicated himself to Rama. Rama would not sleep if Lakshmana was not by his side, nor would he eat without his brother. Lakshmana's younger brothers, Shatrugna and Bharata, too, were very close. Bharata was very truthful and dedicated to Rama. King Dasaratha was very happy with his sons. They were all very skilled and talented. One day, while they were playing, Hey Ram, we know you are good at archery. Can you strike the pot carried by that hunchback lady with the stone? Of course, I can. But that poor lady is carrying the pot with great difficulty. Give me some other target. <laughs> you must strike her pot. We can't give you any other target. Ram hit the pot successfully and the pot fell down. All the water in the pot was wasted. The lady carrying the pot was Queen Kaikeyi's maidservant. She was annoyed and said angrily, Prince Rama, you are too arrogant. You will repent for your action. Ram became very upset. His friends apologized to him. The princess grew up and became worthy of ruling the kingdom. Their father decided to make Rama ascend the throne of Ayodhya, but he wanted to get his sons married first. He was in search of suitable princesses for his sons. One day, Sage Vishwamitra, a very powerful sage, came to meet Dasaratha. Welcome, my lord. I am blessed that you have visited me. I am happy to see you all and the young princes. Is everything fine in Ayodhya? Yes, my lord. Everything is fine with your blessings. I am in search of suitable princesses for my sons. You will find lovely princesses for your handsome sons. Dasaratha. I have come on important work. I must take your children with me. May I know the reason, my lord? Do not worry, great king. I am performing a great yagna in the forest. I want your sons to participate in it. There are some terrible demons in the forest and Rama is the only person who can kill them. On hearing this, King Dasaratha was terrified. My lord, I can give you whatever you ask for, but how can I send my young princes to face such horrible devils? Please forgive me, my lord. Dasaratha, do not defy me. You must send your sons with me. Dasaratha was struck with grief. He did not want to send his sons, but at the same time, he could not pacify Vishwamitra, who had a very bad temper. Seeing his father's condition, Ram approached his father. Father, please do not worry. We will be safe. We will be back in a month's time. We will slay the demons and come home successfully. Rama, you are too young. You don't know the outside world. If something happens to you, I will not be able to take you. Father, if we do not go, the sage will think that we are disobeying him. He needs our help to perform his rituals with other saints for the benefit of the whole kingdom. Dasaratha agreed with great reluctance. 
Ram and Lakshman dressed in ordinary clothes with bows and arrows in their hands and saffron cymbals on their foreheads. Accompany Sage Vishwamitra to the forest. Young princess, are you scared of facing the demons? My lord, we are Kshatriyas. We were born to protect people. Moreover, with the great sage next to us, what should we fear? Good. I will teach you the mantra, Bala Atibala Vidya. Practice it, and no one will be able to defeat you. Is it that powerful, my lord? If you recite these hymns, neither tiredness nor fever will affect you. Demons will not be able to attack you when you are sleeping or unvigilant. My dear Rama, if you practice the Bala Atibala hymns, no one in the world will be able to match you in bravery, caliber, erudition and discernment. My Lord, thank you for your kind-heartedness. Vishwamitra taught Ram and Lakshmana the hymns. Soon they reached the place where the rivers Ganga and Sarayu met. Princess, all the saints will be present in a place few yards from here to perform the great ritual. The gods will appear and give boons for the welfare of the people. These rituals have to be performed with great dedication. There should not be any distraction of any form. It is your duty to take care of everything. So, so be my, it, lord. my lord. We will take, will care, take of care of everything. Of everything. You have one more duty to fulfill, Ram. Yes, my lord. There is a ferocious demon, Tataka, in the forest, who you will have to kill, because we have to pass through this forest to reach our destination. But, my lord, the demon is a woman. How can I kill her? Do not think about all that. She was born a beautiful girl. She had a son called Maricha. He was rude to sage Agastya and the sage cursed him. So his mother got angry and tried to kill Agastya. The sage cursed her as well, turning her into Tataka, a ferocious man-eater. She is a menace to the society. You will have to kill her. As you wish, my lord. The next day, Vishwamitra started with Ram and Lakshman in the early hours to cross the dense forest. The screeching of vultures, roaring of tigers, shrieks of wild boars and the noise of elephants were very scary. But Ram and Lakshman bravely walked ahead. Suddenly, there were sounds of devilish laughter heard all around. A huge Tataka appeared before Ram. You young men, how dare you step into the forest? Did this old sage tell you to come here? You poor boys. Your fate has been decided in this forest. I am going to have a good meal today. Let us see whose fate is decided today. Ha <laughs> ha! You fool! Do not talk too much! In a few seconds you will not have your tongue to speak! Tataka threw a huge stone at Ram. Ram did not say anything. He closed his eyes, took out his arrow and aimed it at Tataka. The arrow smashed the rock and 
put the kataka in her chest. She died with a loud cry. Vishwamitra hugged Sri Rama. Ram and Lakshman reached the place where the other saints were eagerly waiting for the princes. They were delighted to see them. Welcome, Ram and Lakshman. You both have left your kingdom and come here to help us with our yagna. God bless you. It's our duty, my lord. You have brought great news to all of us and to all the people of the surrounding villages that the demon Tataka has been killed. Guru Vishwamitra, King Janaka from the kingdom of Mithila has a great bow which was gifted to him by Lord Shiva. It is a huge bow that was dragged by horses and elephants. It was found at the time of his daughter Sita's birth, who was born from earth. He has displayed the bow and has announced that whoever lifts the bow will marry his daughter. Does he have any other children? Yes, my lord. He had one more daughter, but Sita was born from the earth. She looks like Goddess Lakshmi. Rama, why don't you take a look at that bow after we complete the rituals here? We all feel the same. As you wish, my lord. Lakshmana was very happy to hear this. The next day, all the sages assembled and started reciting Vedic hymns before the God of Fire. Then everyone was deep in meditation. Huge demons started pouring water. throwing pieces of animal flesh into the fire. But Ram and Lakshman killed all the demons and maintained peace for the sages till the last moment. The Yagna was completed peacefully. And all the sages, including Vishwamitra, blessed Ram and Lakshmana. The next day, they proceeded towards Mithila. The kingdom of Mithila had a festive look. Many kings from different countries were anxious to see the bow and lift it. But when they saw the size of the bow, they were too scared to even go near it. Welcome, great Guru. I am greatly honored with your presence. Who are these young men? Janaka. They are the princes of Ayodhya, sons of King Dasaratha. They helped us while we performed the great Yagna by slaying all the demons that disturbed us. They are the bravest Kshatriyas, highly dedicated and disciplined. Rama has killed the demoness Tataka and has brought happiness throughout the kingdom. Amazing! Prince Ram and Lakshmana, I am thrilled to see both of you. Please stay here for at least a few days. Janaka, I have to take these princes back to their father. He will be worried. I heard about the bow of Shiva and I wanted to show it to the princes. My lord, it's my pleasure. Janaka took them to the assembly hall where the bow was kept. Rama, why don't you try lifting it? 
Ram was shocked. My lord, this is kept for the Swayambara. That's why I am asking you to give it a try. King Janaka was overjoyed. Rama prayed to Lord Shiva and left the bow. Brother, you can do it. Please try. With the whole assembly hall waiting for bated breath. Ram approached the bow. He lifted it easily. And even broken. Just then, he happened to see the damsel Sita. Sita was besotted the first time she saw Ram. She could not take her eyes off him. His good looks and charm simply swept her off her feet. Ram too was completely mesmerized by Sita. She was gorgeous beyond words and was beautifully dressed in royal silks and covered with diamonds and pearls. She was an avatar of Mahalakshmi, the goddess of wealth. Ram fell in love with Sita the moment he laid eyes on her. The people in the assembly rose from their seats, unable to believe their eyes. Janaka was overjoyed. Lakshmana embraced Rama. Ram fell at Vishwamitra's feet. May you live long, my son. Don't you have another daughter as well? Yes, my lord. Her name is Urmila. You can give your daughter to Lakshmana. I don't have words to express my happiness. I am very grateful to you, Guru. King Dasaratha was informed about the impending marriages and he was overjoyed. He hurried to Mithila for Ram and Lakshmana's weddings. Dasaratha, Janaka and Vishwamitra arranged a grand dinner. Janaka, is King Kushadwaja your brother? Yes, my lord. He has two lovely daughters, Mandavi and Chatrakirti. Why don't we arrange Mandavi's marriage with Bharata and Chatrakirti's with Chatrugna? Although King Dasaratha and King Janaka were taken aback, they were both overjoyed with this suggestion. What is there to say, my lord? Everything is your wish. The city of Mithila was decorated with brilliant festive colors. There was great joy everywhere. Ram married Sita and Lakshman married Urmila. Bharat married Mandavi and Shatrugna married Chatrukhi.